Okay, I'm going to show you something pretty crazy that's called the Null Test. Check this out. I'm going to start playing the song and then I'm going to introduce another track, which is the exact same file, but with the polarity switched and watch what happens. Okay, and watch what happens when I click it. It's gone. You are not hearing anything, but as you can see on the screen here, there's audio happening. So where did that audio go? Why aren't we hearing anything? Because the reality is both those tracks are playing. And if I unsolo that second track, again, it's an identical copy of that, but with the polarity switched, we hear stuff. So that is called the null effect. And we are going to explore how to do the null test and why you would do the null test. And honestly, the null test is kind of like a audio engineer must know. So this video is for you if you have not experienced the null effect. Hello and welcome. My name is Malcolm Owenflood. I teach audio here on YouTube. So if that's your sort of thing, please do subscribe. And today we're going to be talking about the null test, how to do the null test, why you would want to do the null test, what it is, how does it work as well? Because it's kind of fascinating. Why couldn't you hear anything when we had two audio files playing? As mentioned, this is kind of like an audio engineering 101 thing. So it's an important thing to know, and it might actually come in handy down the road as well. First off, let's get into what we're looking at here. I've got this mix by Darian Gerard that I did a year back or so. It's great tune and this is what it sounds like and i've got that exact same file i literally just duplicated it. i'll do that for you right now so you can see me do it i'm duplicating the track made a new duplicate we'll delete this one and we will call this same okay so we got the mix and we have the same it's a duplicate but what i'm going to do is open up the eq click this polarity button and that is flipping the phase of that track. So they are identical, except for the waveforms have been flipped upside down, essentially. And now when we click play, we hear nothing. So what's happening here? First, we have to explain the null effect is what happens when you give your speakers a string of information, but then you give it an exact opposite string of information at the exact same time. The easiest way that I can think of this is visualizing. Let me just zoom in on a waveform here. As you can see, it goes up here and down here. And now, Let's say that we want to reverse that. Well, then instead of the spike going up, this spike on the next track is actually going to go down. So at the same time, this is the same information, but on one track, it's telling the speaker to push out and on the other speaker is telling the speaker to pull in. So we've got the spike going the exact opposite way on this other track when we flip the phase or the polarity using any plugin like this that has that option. So now when we just have one track playing, it's pushing and pulling as intended, but when we introduce the opposite, which is the phase flip version of it, it is now being told to do the exact opposite. And essentially our speaker just doesn't move as a result. So that is called a null, a phase null. We have effectively nulled the signal. You are hearing the null effect. And just in case you're curious, if we don't flip the phase, all that happens is a volume boost. Essentially you're doubling the volume of what you're hearing. So if I solo the track and then introduce it without the phase flipped, Sounds the exact same, it's just louder. But if I then click the polarity switch, it's gone again. <laughs> so why is this useful? This is useful because it lets us test how things actually affect our audio. So if you've ever thrown a plug in on your mix and be like, I can't tell if that made a difference. You can actually test that. You could test it by printing the mix with the plugin and without the plugin and then playing them at the same time, but flipping the phase on one. And the fascinating thing is, is if you do hear something, that is what has been changed. So let me show you what I'm talking about when I say that. If we have this mix here, say we went to the vocals and decided to EQ and add some reverb to the vocals for the next mix revision. So I've already done that. I've got this big boost here and I've got a reverb here. So our vocals will sound like this now. Right, totally different vocal sound, very different. So now we print a mix with those on, which I've already done to save you some time. And that's like this. And now let's compare that against our original mix, but with the phase flipped on the new one. It doesn't matter which one has the phase flip, it just matters that one does and one doesn't. And now all we're gonna hear, as you'll soon see, is the difference between those two mixes. And the only difference between these two mixes is what I just showed you. That high end, uh, big vocal boost with this EQ here and this spring reverb plugin by Audioscape, great plugin. So now when we play this, all you're gonna hear is the difference between the two. Ever, ever 
So essentially, you just hear vocals. You actually do hear a little bit of keys, and I'll explore why that's happening in a second. But for the most part, you're hearing the changes we made to the vocal, which is kind of a really useful thing. You can tell what was changed. You can tell what's being affected by the processing you're doing. So not only can you tell if something's actually doing anything at all, potentially downgrading or improving the quality, you can hear the difference by using the null test, which is kind of fascinating, honestly. You could use this outside of the digital realm as well. So if you printed a mix through hardware a couple times, you could compare the difference there. You could use it to learn what was different between your rough mix and the mix you got back from your mixer. You could use it for really a ton of scenarios, but just know that you just have your two versions and you flip the phase on one and what nulls out or what doesn't null out is the result. That's the difference between the two, essentially. You do have to have them lined up for this to work. If the one's delayed, show you that. Let's go back to our same uh, two mixes here and one is flipped. Let's do it here and the other is not flipped and they will sound like silence, right? We hear nothing, but as it plays, I'm gonna delay one of the signals. So can't hear anything. Now let's nudge it a little bit. We're nudging at hundred samples. By playing by the road. Turn up the nudge it again. The, the more I nudge it, the more uh, noticeable it becomes in the phase test or the null test no longer works, right? They have to be perfectly lined up. So it's more easy to test it on mixes you printed where you've set the mix parameter changes. Okay, so now we need to talk about why we didn't only hear vocals because that's important actually. Let's go to this comparison again. So we're hearing vocals and a little guitar. Okay, so the vocals, we know why that's happening because we changed them and we're hearing the difference between those two mixes. But there was a guitar there. There were some keys in the first verse, I think, if I jump back to that. Even a little bit of kick. That could be a number of things. I might have shared an effect between the different... Uh, tracks. So by brightening where those effects are sent, I might have inadvertently caused something else to also change. But what else can happen is that some plugins are random, meaning that every time you print them, they're a little bit different. The reverb might not always respond the exact same way. For example, you know, the phaser might be a little different. Kind of all of these minute things, especially with the more auto plugins like Goldfoss and Soothe, where they might just they just might not do things the exact same time every time you run it. So you end up with these tiny little discrepancies, which is what we're hearing here, I believe. But for the most part, they should null out. And it is important to be specific on this. That's why there's a plugin right on the OG mix here, even though we're not flipping the phase on that. Because if you had a really intense, heavy plugin that caused delay here, on one of them, but not on the other, then they would be out of time. And like I showed you with that nudge test, it would no longer work. So I, as a rule of thumb, when I'm doing this test, I'll just make sure that whatever plugin I'm using to flip the phase is on all of them. So they have the same amount of delay compensation happening. But yeah, it's kind of a cool, fun, interesting thing you can try and use in your own DAW. Uh, even if it's not for a test, it's kind of a cool way to experiment with waveforms of polarity and see how it works. It, I find it interesting visualizing it and thinking about that waveform going up and down and then flipping it and your speaker trying to respond to that information where all of a sudden there's no information because it's canceled out. It's interesting. I don't know. I like it. I hope that this made sense to you because it's probably one of those phrases you've heard before, like phase cancellation, you know, phase null, nulling. Um, those terms do come up in this audio world. And if you didn't know what was going on, now you do. And actually you could use that, you know, to explain why there's problems with like a top and bottom mic on a snare because they're getting that same information, but in the opposite direction. So if you don't flip the phase of the bottom snare, you end up with that kind of cancellation. It's not as exact, you know, they're at different places. Uh, one's closer to the wires, one's closer to the stick. So they don't completely null, but they still cancel out and get really thin sounding, right? You lose the similar behavior and only keep the difference. So it's important to flip the polarity on this bottom one so that you don't lose all that bottom end, for example, on your snare. You really want that stuff, right? So it helps you picture and visualize phase, which is one of the most useful things you can do when you're engineering drums in particular, but really anything. I hope it helped. It's kind of a weird one but it was fun. <laughs> and if you want some more, I got another video coming for you right there and there. And there is, as always, a free mixing workshop in the description of this video. So please do go check that out as well. Adios. Bye.